ever wondered how we generate electricity? I have two strong magnets and a coil of wire connected to an LED. Now this LED has two different colors depending on the direction of the current. When I move the magnet into the coil, the LED lights up. That's right, I'm generating electricity just by moving the magnet. Now if I switch the magnet around, my LED lights up green. Now if I shake the magnet back and forth, I get both colors. I am actually producing an alternating current. Now this is not much different to how electricity is generated. Yes, scaled up and much more efficient, but generators work under the same principle, by the relative motion between wires and magnets. Now we rely on our electricity for our lighting, cooking, in fact, pretty much everything. Whether it is from non-renewable sources such as coal-fired and nuclear power plants, or renewable ones such as wind and hydroelectric, would you believe that much of our electricity comes from simply moving loops of wire between magnets, or more efficiently, by rotating them? Now here is a model generator. In this case, my wire is looped as a coil, and this coil is situated between two magnets. Now watch when I move them by rotating them in between the magnets. And just like my earlier demonstration, I am generating an electrical current. So how does it work? It was Michael Faraday in 1831 who determined that moving a magnetic field across wires, or more correctly causing a rate of change of flux, you generate an electromotive force, or EMF for short. Now EMF is an archaic term, and it's actually a voltage. But what is flux? Now I have a more detailed explanation of flux in this video, and I encourage you to check out my website which has a lesson on magnetic flux. Now I'm using a very simple model here of our generator. Here are our magnets, and I have my loop of wire. In essence, flux can be thought of of how much of the magnetic field is passing through the area of the loop. So in this position, I have a lot of magnetic field lines passing through. So the flux is at a maximum. In this position, less lines pass through, and so I have less flux. And of course, in this position, no lines pass through the loop at all, and so the flux is zero. But it's the changing flux that causes a generation of a voltage. And then I can do this by simply rotating it, like so. And the faster I turn it, the faster that changes, and the greater the voltage is induced. And if this loop of wire is then connected to an external circuit and it's closed, we not only induce a voltage, but an electrical current. Back to my generator, which is now connected to a data logger so we can record the current. Now, as I rotate, you can see that the current alternates, positive, then negative, and back to positive, and so forth. And I'm producing an alternating current, or AC for short. If I spin it faster, the frequency of this alternating increases, but importantly, so does the rate of change of flux. And so I produce a higher voltage, and this leads to a higher current. This is how much of our electricity is generated. Scale this up, and then drive the spinning not by hand, but by other means. And we produce the alternating current supply we are familiar with. And this is why coal or nuclear fission is used to heat up water, to generate steam, and to drive the generator turbines. And in the case of wind turbines, it's the wind itself that turns the generators. And with hydroelectric, it's the moving water through dams. And so that explains alternating current. But can we produce a direct current, or DC? The answer is yes, and all we need to do is somehow switch the current every 180 degree turn. Now in the alternating configuration, the coil is connected to an external circuit by way of what's referred to as slip rings. For a DC configuration, we connect the coil to what is called a split ring commutator, which flips the current every half turn, and the result is that every half rotation, the voltage and therefore the current maintains a constant direction, and therefore we have a direct current. 
Now let's see this in action. At the moment it's in a slip ring configuration and by sliding this across it now becomes split ring. And so let's see what happens. we get direct current. Now I hope that has helped you have a greater understanding of how generators work. Check out my lesson on generators on my website where you can have a play with some of the interactives and as well have access to many other physics lessons. Now I value your support so please consider by buying me a coffee. My name is Paul from Physics High. Bye for now.